it's not that often we get right the way down to London to do some filming, but we're here today. Uh, but it's really, really interesting because here we can actually see the history of EV charging and as it's developed. Uh, location is South Mims service station on the M25, and it's the one I get loads of comments about uh, where they are complaining about queues and very, very busy. So we come down here, we're sort of right up in the backwaters in not even Preston itself, we're out, out in the suburbs. Uh, so this is a total surprise to us. So going back in history, this is the original electric highway. Uh, still signposted, GridServe Electric Highway. GridServe, of course, took over, merged with whatever they like to call it, uh, to become GridServe as it is today. Uh, this is not unusual. When, uh, when we were traveling in the old days, we would find one charger out of order. These are dual bays, around about 50 kilowatts, not even worth checking the power of them these days. Um, but that's what we, used, we, we were used to. So in a motorway service station like this, very, very busy one, junction of the M1, the M25, just up the road, um, this would have been heaving and all you were offered was two. Then of course we started getting expansions and we can move up here and we recognize the colors instantly. These are apple green and these are really quite old units now. So it's the old style tritium uh, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them here and the dual bay once again. We've got our Chadamos. We've got a price advertised 79 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, but if you use the app, that drops down to 74 pence. We can see the power. These are up to 175 kilowatts, but shared power. Uh, so it's dual. No, it's not dual bay. It's either or. Uh, so you can only charge one at a time. So it would be up to the full 175. Coming across here, we've got one out of order. This is not unusual. These tritium ones were, uh, they're, they're being replaced all over the, all over the place because they are just falling apart these days. Uh, but an another four bays as well. So this is what we would have got used to a short while after Electric Highway came over. What we're going to do now is just show you where it's going today. And you can see in the distance there, we've got apple green, but these, is, these are the new ones. These are the American ones that they uh, bring over. Uh, and we counted them up earlier. There are 14 bays. So that means, and these are dual bays, genuine dual bays, so you can charge two at a time. So this one, for example, there's a bay there for charging, a bay here for charging. Um, these also, usually, when I've checked them, they're rated at 180 kilowatts. These don't seem to be signed up. So when we look over at the grid serve, one's in use, uh, the other one's broken down. When we look at the apple green over there, the original ones, one's out of service, two of them are in use. And then we've got 14 new ones, 14 dual bays. And we've got the MGs, we've got the Porsche Taycans. We have all sorts here. Uh, Vauxhall Corsa. And these are genuine dual bays. So this is a big choice. In terms of time, we're around about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. This would traditionally be quite a busy time. So I'm surprised to see so much availability. There is plenty of charging capacity here. Uh, and I'm not seeing the evidence of the queuing. I'm not saying they don't get any, but I'm not seeing evidence of it today. So that's what we have here. And then of course, just a brisk walk away, about 50 yards, and we have the Tesla supercharger. This will be a dedicated one, uh, Tesla's only. And again, I hear all sorts of problems about queuing. But again, this is South Mims. It's a Wednesday morning. It's uh, 10, 11 o'clock. And we seem to have quite an awful lot of vacant bays. Uh, we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars charging. And we have one, two, three, four, 20 odd chargers. 
So what an expansion this has been. We've gone from just two grid surf electric highway, 50 kilowatt dual base shared, and we're now up to the Teslas are 250, Apple Greens generally 100, 180, sorry, 180 or 175, and still got the grid serve there. So this is fabulous that the number of chargers. To put this one into perspective, we've just come from rugby. We did stop there for a little bit of filming. And at rugby services, we came across 28 Tesla V3 chargers plus 36 of the grid serve, the new 360 kilowatt uh, dual bay intelligent chargers. Uh, that gave a total of 64 chargers for that uh, particular location. Here we're looking at uh, 40 or 50. This is changing and it's literally changing by the day. And it does mean that come along here, there's a very, very high chance you'll be able to get a space. And if you have a Tesla, you'll have a choice. If this one is totally full, you can always go and use them. But there's no evidence at the moment that this is full. Now, anything used on this sort of scale is subject to wear and tear. And we're seeing that here. We came from rugby, we found a couple of broken ones. Now, I'm sure that one has been reported because it's been temporarily fixed to make it relatively safe. Uh, but we really need to keep an eye on that and find out when that one comes back online. So we've got some chipped ones here. Uh, we've also got uh, some loose panels. Um, so these really, after sort of three, four, five, six, eight, ten years, whatever length of time they've been here, these are now starting to show their age. And we also have the announcement from Tesla that they are going to be installing the V4 chargers with the V4 cabinets. Cabinets here, by the way, right over there, serving these. So if we have a situation where these are starting to fail, they will at some point just replace them. And if they get here, the 500 kilowatt V4 chargers, this will be an absolutely stunning place to stop and charge. We've not yet got any indication of where the first of the V4s are going in. Uh, we're looking out for it and trying to find out. But over time, these just fail. Uh, there's nothing wrong, um, nothing, nothing unusual about that. It is just wear and tear, as we found out with the apple green ones at the bottom, the tritium ones. They have a lifespan. And so part of the issue would be not just to install new chargers all the time, but sometimes just go back to some of the existing ones. We've got one near, near us, which is Charnock Richard. Uh, and they're the old V2s. Uh, so they've been around for an awful long time and they must be coming to the end of their life. So it's not a case of just slapping a charger in and it works then forevermore. Uh, there is maintenance, there's repairs, there's replacements. And at a certain point, they just become obsolete, throw them all away and start again. And we saw that up at T-Bay on the M6 in the Lake District where uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, they'd reached the end of their life with the V2s up there uh, and just swapped them for the V3s. So it's an evolution, but it's lovely to see that there is accessible charging here, South Mims. We are in peak time. Uh, haven't checked the rates. I don't need to specifically because each location varies. But generally speaking, when you're off peak, that would be before eight o'clock in the morning or after eight o'clock in the evening. Uh, you're going to be paying round about 40 pence per kilowatt hour. In peak time, we're going to be in the 50 to 55 pence per kilowatt hour. So there is a difference, uh, but it's not a fantastic difference. And even put charging now at peak time, uh, 50 odd pence. It's an awful lot of people who don't have a Tesla who would be absolutely desperate to get this sort of price for their charging when they're faced with uh, grid serve now at 85, Osprey at 82, uh, and even the really cheap EV on the move down at 65p, that's gone up to 72 pence. To them, 50, 50 odd p for peak time charging must be a dream. So it is lovely to see that there are plenty of, uh, whoa, we got some more Teslas right over there. Oh, I never saw those on the way in. 
They look like the V3s. I'm not going to walk all the way over there because the principle is we have extra chargers here, which I hadn't even noticed. So whatever these add up to, we can add up some more right in the corner. Doesn't look like that many, but what a choice we have these days. Now, I know there are some local areas where you're really suffering, but there are others like this, like rugby, like, like uh, Preston, where we've got an absolute glut of chargers, be they Apple Green uh, or the Teslas or GridServe or whatever it is you want to choose, but 36 chargers, GridServe at uh, Rugby Services, a huge number of chargers. Now, with a mind to safety, these are busy, busy motorway services and us wondering about filming is always a potential risk and the distance and it's really cold today. Don't know why I put my sandals on. Um, so we thought we'd come back to the car to have a look at how many chargers there are. Quite a surprise here. It's a total of 36 stalls all of them 250 kilowatts, which are the V3s. But the price has amazed me because we're um, running at peak time at the moment, and that goes between 8 in the morning and 8 in the evening. We are currently 11 o'clock. So we're right in peak time, 43 pence peak. This is the most expensive time of the day to charge your car at this Tesla supercharger, 43 pence. Off peak, and that's before eight o'clock and after uh, eight o'clock in the evening. Uh, it changes before eight o'clock is 33 pence, after eight o'clock in the evening is 38 pence. This is really cheap charging. If you look at the modern Teslas, this is, these are Teslas only, so if you look at the modern Tesla, the three or the new Y coming out, they have an efficiency of about four miles per kilowatt hour. So we're equating here to around about 9p. Uh, public charging, per mile driven and that equates to a petrol car doing about 30 or 40 to the gallon will be up in the 15 to 18 pence range so this is cheap motoring and this is public charging so if you can't charge at home and you live anywhere near here and millions of people do um, you don't need to be able to charge at home to get cheaper motoring than your old petrol or diesel car. Now, it's not the seven pence a kilowatt hour that we get at home charging. It's about four times that. However, as a public charging system, this is an actual very, very good rate.